first we're going to uh, start off with some of the questions that were asked before the show started. So this is through our Discord. So again, if you have any questions before the show and for future shows, uh, feel free to post them in our Discord at uh, FDC at uh, Fun FDC, um, and also feel free to contact us um, via social media in order to uh, send us your questions. Uh, so let's get started. So. Um, the first question we had was from Sean uh, on FDC team 3540, and his question was, how does your team go about figuring out what is a good cycle time for that year's robot? So we attempt that the same way that we do in FTC, and so when the, the game first comes out, we, we look at the game and we think, okay, so what are the best teams in the world going to do? And so... We had, we had determined, we had about one point per second as what we thought some the best teams were going to do. And then we normally try to achieve about two thirds of that because we know we set our standards pretty high for ourselves. And so, but if you look at it, the top scores at the competition were mid, like about 150, maybe a little more than that. And so that was actually pretty accurate to what we had predicted in the mm -hmm. beginning. So how do you think that would apply to uh, something like this year's game of Skystone? Yeah, so we've we've uh, we've struggled this year, especially for Skystone, with predicting score, especially with how autonomous collaboration could work and how it's much diff much more difficult to get, let's say, the maximum points you can get in autonomous compared to how it normally is, especially or we at least think so. And so yeah. we um. We've set some goals for ourselves personally, but we're not exactly sure where we think all some other teams will stand. Yeah. Again, we're still we're actually still prototyping for Skystone because of First Global. We've gotten a little bit behind. Yeah, yeah for sure. So, um, next question uh, is: What do you think contributed most to your Inspire Award? The single thing that contributed most to your Inspire Award, and this is from Brian from Team Sixty Nine Sixty Four Igu Tech. Okay, so first of all, hey, Brian. Uh, so one thing, you know, our team, we've been listening to that speech that Woody gave when he announced um, that we were the Inspire Award winners. Like, we played that on loop yeah, after we left Houston. Just because, I mean, it was all of ours, like, it was some of our proudest moments in our lives, you know, all of our work. Uh, but I think one thing that definitely sets us apart is our engineering notebooks. And I don't want to say it's just the notebooks. It's the fact that we have like an entire workflow dedicated to getting entries into a notebook, getting them revised and getting them handwritten or typed in our corresponding notebooks. Uh, so one thing we'll probably talk about is we actually have like a team management system, a software that we call Trello. And we use this to productively manage all of our tasks assign tasks to people and track progress towards our different goals. So when we say engineering notebooks, just know that it's so much more than just like the content. It's all the time and organization that we allocate towards developing those and making sure they're absolutely the highest quality that we can make them. Um, so we have a lot more information about our notebooks on our website, like Bryant mentioned before on the Inspire page, just because we want to help a lot of teams. So if you want more information about our notebooks, if you want to see more than what's on our website, you know, please feel free to reach out to us on Twitter. Um, yeah, or feel free to like contact us. But I think definitely the workflow that goes into our engineering notebook is probably what sets us apart the most. I think, and if I could add on that, I just think one other thing that really sets our team apart is our strategic plan. So I think for a lot of teams, a strategic plan is just something that's a requirement for the Connect Award. So you do it, you put it in your notebook, and you're done with it. But our team, uh, and that's definitely what we did the first two years, but our team recently has started to try to follow our strategic plan very closely, and we set specific goals for exactly what we want to do and how, not necessarily how we're going to do them, but what we want to accomplish with that. And then at the end of each year, we grade ourselves on that strategic plan so we know where we think we can improve. And we actually only have a one page strategic plan. So, um, you know, our first year it was like 20 pages and it was kind of ridiculous, but we actually made just a one pager. We have our mission on there, our vision as a team, and we have different strategic actions and uh, different areas of our team in order to accomplish those. And one thing that I think is also sets us apart is that our vision is not just to be, uh, our vision used to be 
to be an internationally competitive robotics team, but now our vision is more to be as like a recognized uh, STEM program in our commit in our community. So we kind of moved past just being a team like that's competing for robots, and we're really trying to take outreach and everything to the next level, where we're just like an education initiative in our community. So um, definitely, that's a great point, Brian. So we just showed a, a video of you guys uh, coming down and winning the, the Inspire Award. Do you mind talking a little about that as you came down and won? Uh, and then how uh, hard did they tell you to not go onto the grass at all at, at Houston? Yeah, so uh, funny story. So for those of you guys that don't know, we were actually Inspire Award finalists last year um, at the Houston World Championship. And that was the year that Super 7 won. So, of course, we're super happy for them that they won that year. Um, but... Uh, we actually got a sneak peek that they won before it was announced to the world just because they had to get them out onto the field. So um, at the award ceremony uh, earlier that day when they announced that, you know, we were finalists, they gave us all special bracelets to wear to Minute Maid Park. And they said, you guys sit in the special section. And um, basically when it got time to announce Inspire, we were looking for this one lady because we knew that she was going to stand next to whatever team won. So we were like looking for her rapidly. And uh, then she ended up coming down Super 7's row. So we knew like immediately like, oh, okay, you know, we didn't get it, but we were still super happy for Super 7. But this year, you know, we were all extremely anxious and we were looking for that one person to like make eye contact with us or come down our row and absolutely no one did so we were like freaking out and we're like was it someone else did they make eye contact with another team was this set up at a time like we were freaking out so when they announced our name like the reactions you're seeing there like i am bawling in that video uh that was not planned okay uh, it was all like in the heat of the moment because we had absolutely no idea this was happening and our coach even says if you go back and watch the video you can see like the podium was clear where Woody had a script and you can like see our name on the script but like we were so anxious we didn't even I, I didn't. yeah at least so yeah we didn't even uh, care I more love but... this teammate you have that's super possessive on the trophy here in just a second you'll see which I think is amazing yeah <laughs> so just a shout out to Dexter and Malik there, uh, there were our first two seniors on the team. Uh, Malik is living it up at Georgia Tech, so we're very proud of her. You know, doing biomedical engineering. Uh, Dexter's still in Arkansas, and you know he's planning to go to college. So we're very proud of our seniors. And yeah, there's me crying. So. Yeah. <laughs> and then on the on the grass thing. So, but I mean, they they made sure when we went down there that we didn't get on the grass. But then after the competition, um, we were trying to get a picture on the field with like the just with like the stadium in the background and they were like being super strict on us. Like they're like, do not touch the grass. Yeah. It was, it was like, Got it. Ooh, it was <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so we're running a little bit short on time. Um, but, uh, we're going to go on to our next question. Uh, again, another pre-show question. Uh, this is from Wes on FTC team 3658. Uh, his question was, how do you go about managing time and managing your people on your team? I think you went to, uh, you mentioned this briefly with your Trello. Uh, right. how, can you go a little bit more into depth about that? Yeah. So, um, uh, you know, we have leads on our team and the leads are really responsible. Like we have robot leads and then we have like community engagement leads. So they're really responsible uh, for updating the information that are that's on Trello, you know, adding good comments and things like that. So that's definitely how we manage our people. And we definitely try to enforce as many people checking it as much as possible. One thing we're really trying to make known on our team is a lot of the work that we do for our team has to be considered homework because we don't have the time of the day to spend, you know, in our lab. So sometimes team members have to take that work home too. Um, you know, in terms of managing people, uh, you know, we try to get all of them to show up to all of our meetings. We have a funny thing about our team is we have required meetings, which are um, Tuesday, Fridays from four to seven. And then we have optional meetings but team members on root negative one know that the word optional isn't really optional it's like if your family doesn't let you attend then that's the only excuse for not being there so you know we definitely try to recruit members on our team that are as committed uh to the vision as everyone else's yeah nice so yeah, our next question is uh, one of the audience questions. So again, if you have a question, uh, please, 
please feel free to put it in the chat at, and tag us at first updates now. Um, so our question is, uh, oh, uh, it's not really a question, but it's from Lax Dude too, uh, and he say and they were just saying um, they want to thank uh, Team USA for helping Team Canada, and it was an amazing experience for them to uh, be able to meet you guys. The person's name no is uh, Tristan, who answered <laughs> or who asked. Yep, and uh, yeah, it's, it's so just. Me. Moving on, just because time. Uh, one question from Extreme Voltage 10515, which is Ashray's <laughs> team here, is um, how often do you meet and what's your team's time commitment? So our team, I said about 15 hours earlier. So we meet, um, so like Abby said, with our required meetings, four to seven, Tuesday and Friday, mm -hmm. our um, optional meetings on Tuesdays go till 8.30. So you can stay that extra hour and a half. And then on Friday, we go until uh, 10.30. So that's an extra uh, three and a half hours. And then we also meet on Sundays from one to five. And like, so like today, uh, because we're behind, we met today from right after school until six. So yeah. we, we have, we spend a lot of time and then we also do a lot also outside of robotics, whether that's on Saturdays, we'll do volunteering or yeah, anything like that. So are, do you guys all go to the same school? So, so most of us go to the same school. We're actually like a sort of school-based team, but we recently started getting um, other team members from different schools. So we have one, uh, one of our team members, Kate, she actually goes to a high school that's across town. And another one of our team members, Ethan, hey, Ethan, uh, he actually lives in Cabot, Arkansas, um, which is like four hours away from our hometown. And we frequently Skype in with him, and he helps a lot with the programming and electrical aspects of our team. Wow. Yeah. Yep. So uh, next question, um, just really quick answer. What's your top couple notebook tips? Um, number one, you need to have someone who's crazy enough to take the responsibility of like all of it. That person on our team is Sarah. And she is like an English grammar freak. So not only will she revise all of the notebook entries uh, from everyone, and you guys know that like, you know, mechanical engineers don't always write the best whenever they're writing <laughs> entries. Okay, so she has a tough job there. And also she harasses people. So she's extremely persistent about getting notebook <laughs> entries from everyone. <laughs> So, um, but yeah, the fact that, you know, she spends so much time on that outside of school, definitely find someone who is willing to dedicate that much time and effort. Another thing is just be authentic in the notebook entries. Don't just put the stuff that worked in there. Tell the story from day one, you know, all the failures, all the good things. And, you know, once the judges see that you've taken time to document all of that, I think it's really going to set your team apart no matter what. And handwriting. You should try handwriting it. And yeah, and we would also definitely encourage um, splitting up your, if you have a system for doing a traditional engineering notebook or like where you write your entries, things like that, we would definitely recommend s separating that from your community engagement, your outreach, all of those things. Yeah. Wow. All right, so our next question is from uh, Anon. Uh, what was your favorite country to work with? Uh, it's an anonymous person. Never mind. Uh, what was your favorite? <laughs> what was your favorite? Where was your favorite country to work with at FGC? And uh, what other cool stories do you have working with other countries? Do you have any interesting stories from the competition itself? Uh, I think so. I made a lot of best friends at FGC, and we still keep in touch on uh, WhatsApp. But definitely, some of my some of my ladies from uh, Barbados. <laughs> Uh, we were right across from Team Zimbabwe in the pits, so I definitely got to get pretty close to them. Um, also, Team Libya, and we got really close to the UAE too, uh, the home team. You know, we're very excited to be, you know, immersed in their culture. So I personally made really good connections with all of those. Team Mexico, you know, my family's from Mexico, so definitely strong connection there. And they brought me candy from Mexico, so uh, <laughs> all the praise to them. Yeah. <laughs> That's an that's awesome. Yeah. Um, so the next one is, uh, did Team USA find the micro pollutants uh, a little harder to get, uh, a little harder than what you got in the kit itself? Yes, yes for sure. Absolutely. So 
The first time we went to the practice field, our intake would not pick anything up. And we were like, what is wrong? Yeah. Like, what is happening? It was working great at home. And then so I picked up one of the balls and squeezed it. And it was it was so much different than yeah. the ones in the kids. We didn't want to do any complaining on like the live show or anything. <laughs> but there were definitely some discrepancies between the scoring minerals from what they gave us. And, um, you know, what we had on the field. So we had to make changes to our intake, actually. To you can express them. your opinion anytime you want on fun. Don't worry about it. <laughs> and and they also, the, the micro pollutants especially also changed throughout the competition yeah. as teams used them. They would get more squishy. And so there were like, there were multiple levels of like, micro pollutants like so the ones we brought with us from the kit they had the most squish and then because the practice field ones were being run with all the time they had a they had less but they still had more than the ones on the actual real field because those ones wow. were being played with the most and so they were the most stiff so it was it was it was hard to try to get everything fine-tuned when we didn't have like what we were actually competing with. yeah okay so um and then our last question of the day is um, just from eCreates, and he's asking Bryant, where did you get that cool chain? Yeah, so, so well, so that's that's Ethan who we were talking about. So, <laughs> I don't, yeah. <laughs> he's just weird. Just for him, honestly. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And so, um, with that, we're going to start our ending. So uh, thank you for to everybody who is watching, and thanks for all of the follows and subscriptions we received during the show. Don't forget that you can subscribe for free if you or your parents have Amazon Prime. If you want to stay connected with us, follow us on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram at FunFTC, and join our Discord through the link at the chat. Tyler, can you please read through who subscribed during the show today? Yeah, let's give some big shout-outs uh, today, and thank you to everybody who... Uh... Stepped up to keep fun, a lot of live independence. So people who have subscribed since last show were given some bits as well. We have uh, Tier 1 subs from Tacklebat, Will94944, uh, Sensational342, Matt1511, Gymnast544, GC Rose, Lino C, uh, uh, Elan 9421 who I always mispronounce, 18 months of support with Prime. Thank you very much. Brian Sachs, 135, five months of support. Uh, Gymnast, three months in a row. Uh, thanks a lot for that. Uh, some bits from Extreme Voltage. Uh, Meredith Novak, welcome back, Meredith. 14 months of support. Uh, Fortnite got uh, 59.40 with some bits. Uh, Squat 21 DRU with eight bits. Uh, and uh, Cool Yo Julio, one, two, three, interesting name with some bits as well. So thank you, everybody, uh, for helping keep fun, loud, live, and independent. We appreciate it. Don't forget to check our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And on behalf of myself, Arjun, and our producer, Tyler, and of course, our uh, team, uh, USA, uh, with us, we'd like you all. Uh, we'd like to thank you all for tuning in. Uh, we'll be back in a couple of weeks with another episode of FTC Live. So stay up to date with our uh, social media and our Discord um, to uh, learn when the next when our next um, show will be. And check us out on social media at Fun FTC Live. Uh, thank you all for tuning in, and good night, everyone. Everybody, way bye, way yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. You can also directly help support fun by visiting our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now or by subscribing at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent.